when it comes to radio astronomy from south asia from the indian terrain one name which has been significant and instrumental in contribution to the areas of astronomy and astrophysics with outstanding achievements in building innovative powerful facilities in the field of astronomy has been none other than dr gobind swaroop he has been a key scientist with his concepts designs and installations of radio telescopes based out of two geographical locations in india in south and west with uti and pune respectively under his leadership a strong group in radio physics has been built at the tata institute of fundamental research tifr bombay which put india on the global map Born in pre-independent India in a small village in Uttar Pradesh called Thakurdwara, Dr. Swaroop was the second youngest of the eight siblings. Born to a zamindar family, he finished his schooling from Moradabad and then moved to Allahabad University to pursue his bachelor's and master's in science, majoring in physics. He then started working at the National Physical Laboratory Delhi. in 1950 it was the then director of national physical laboratory sir k s krishnan under whom dr swaroop got mentored he asked dr swaroop a fresher then to build the necessary electronics to study electronic spin resonance to his surprise he set up the experiment within 18 months which was quite a remarkable feat but it was after k s krishnan's colloquium at national physical laboratory describing the remarkable discoveries in radio astronomy that he had learnt about at the general assembly of the international union of radio sciences in sydney in 1952 that dr swaroop actually got fascinated and interested deeply in the subject dr swaroop set off to sydney in 1953 under Colombo Plant Fellowship to work with Joseph Pauci and his group at CSIRO given Dr Swaroop's interest in experimental work rather unusual for an Indian at that time Pauci suggested Dr Swaroop to work for 3 months each with different teams leading innovation in radio astronomy at that time Dr Swaroop assisted W N Krishan Sen in making a map of the quiet sun at the wavelength of 21 cm using manual fourier transform using electrical calculator a decade later based on the experience of this painstaking method dr swaroop invented a much simpler scheme of achieving the same and technique is in use today and has revolutionized medical tomography after this dr swaroop worked with paul wild to develop a 45 megahertz receiver to determine the velocity of ionospheric turbulence followed by development of a phase shifter for the mills cross antenna with bernie mills in the final 3 months dr swaroop made a highly stable dc power supply working in the group led by john bolton during his work in australia dr swaroop happened to meet an indian scientist from kodaikanal observatory named r parthasarthi they worked together to convert an array of 32 antennae from an operating wavelength of 21 cm to 60 cm the work resulted in the discovery of the phenomena of limb brightening of the quiet sun as predicted by smurd in 1950 after the two years of amazing work experience when planning is returned to india dr swaroop learned that the 32 antenna array was going to be scrapped so he requested palsy if they could gift it to india Pauci readily agreed and K.S. Krishnan welcomed it at National Physical Laboratory Delhi upon Dr. Swaroop's request. On his return to India, Dr. Swaroop got married. His wife, Bina Swaroop, was the daughter of a well-known economist then. Being married for more than six decades, he finds himself fortunate to have her as a life partner. Dr. Swaroop moved to the United States to work at Fort Davis Radio Astronomy Station in Texas of the Harvard Observatory. Within a few months, he had made an interesting discovery, a new type of radio burst from the sun. 
Subsequently, he moved to pursuing PhD at Stanford University, working under the supervision of Professor Ronald Bracewell. After obtaining his PhD, he joined the faculty of Stanford in 1961 and worked there for about two years. But it was in the August of 1961, the General Assembly of International Astronomical Union (IAU) in Berkeley, California, that four Indian astronomers, Dr. Swarup, Dr. T. Krishnan, Dr. T. K. Menon, and Dr. M. R. Kundu discussed the idea of returning to India and setting up a new group. They sent their proposal to Tata Institute of Fundamental Research (TFR), which asked for assessment from five distinguished astronomers from around the world. Recommendations were generous, such as the one by Bok. An offer like the present one comes only rarely in the history of a nation, but scientifically is obviously coming of age. A highly supportive reply came from Dr. Homi Baba of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Bombay. The cable on 20th January 1962 read, "We have decided to form a radio astronomy group. Stop letter follows with an offer stop." In a letter to Dr. Swarup, Baba wrote on 3 April 1962, "If your group fulfills the expectation we have of it, this could lead to some very much bigger equipment and work in radio astronomy." in india than we can foresee at present dr swarup accepted the invitation quit from stanford and joined the tata institute of fundamental research in april 1963 a new journey was about to embark and new inventions were about to be seen india was awaiting to see a revolution of sorts in the field of radio astronomy The 32 antennae which were on hold from Australia finally made their way to the Indian shores in 1963. These were moved from the National Physical Laboratory Delhi to the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research Bombay and the setup was made at the outskirts of Mumbai at Kalyan. The use of simple and novel transmission line systems to connect the antennas allowed the team to set up the Kalyan array within months. Primarily solar studies were undertaken with the Kalyan interferometer that operated at frequency of 610 megahertz with the team comprising of Dr. Swarup already was making bigger plans the radio telescopes of that time had had a very limited resolution and therefore getting an accurate position of a radio source on the sky was extremely difficult this limitation could be overcome by the lunar occultation technique where one could accurately determine the position of the radio source depending on exactly when it disappeared behind the moon dr swarup realized that a sensitive radio telescope could make measurements of the position and angular size for thousands of radio sources and decide between competing theories of the origin of the universe Dr Swarup discussed the idea with M G K Menon the then dean of the physics faculty of TIFR who responded enthusiastically Baba extensively grilled Swarup about his plans and found that Swarup had already worked out all the details When Swarup asked him if he could prepare a project report Baba told him young man Do not waste your time writing a project report. Your main problem would be to collect a team. When you have managed that, you can write a project report and proceed with its design and construction. Dr. Swarup set out for a location scouting for a new setup which was later called the Uti Radio Telescope. He and R.P. Sinha explored the lands around Uti and finally found a suitable location that met the requirements. Dr Baba approved the same and finally a new project started off The OT radio telescope was designed and fabricated with domestic Indian technological resources The OT radio telescope 
ORT is a cylindrical parabolic reflecting surface 530 meters long and 30 meter wide placed on a hill whose slope is about 11 degrees in the north-south direction, the same as the latitude of Uti. This makes it possible to track celestial object by simply rotating the antenna mechanically along its long axis. The reflecting surface of the telescope is made up of 1100 thin stainless steel wires running parallel to each other for the entire length of the cylinder and supported on 24 steerable parabolic frames. The amazing team, which was a hybrid of physicists and engineers with a median age of 26, working 18 hours a day, comprised of It took four years in the making and finally it was completed in 1969 and the lush green locales of Uti had seen something new and magical to boast of. The first observations with the Uti telescope were done in 1970. The project was a big success. India had not seen something of that complexity before in astronomy. But in 1971, the telescope had a mishap where the couplings broke loose. It was a disaster and led to a difficult phase, but the team worked again to rebuild it and it got fully functional again in 1973. By 1975, the telescope and the group had established themselves as a world leader in observational cosmology. It was a due recognition when the government of India issued a stamp featuring the Uti telescope. For this monumental effort, Dr. Swaroop was awarded the Padma Shri, India's fourth highest civilian award in 1973. By 1984, the ORT, the OT radio telescope, was further developed into OT synthesis radio telescope that had an extent of 4 kilometers. It consisted of eight small parabolic cylindrical antennas measuring 23 meters by 7.5 meters and a large ORT itself, all combined with radio links. It operated at 327 MHz and provided resolution of about 35 arc seconds by 60 arc seconds. Sources emerged from the OSRT included supernova remnants, star-forming regions, nearby galaxies, extended radio galaxies, and clusters of galaxies. Though the OSRT was relatively short-lived, Building and running it provided valuable experience to Dr. Swaroop and his team in the realm of synthesis radio telescopes. Looking forward, he and his team were ready for larger and more ambitious projects. The GMRT was conceived as a next-generation facility meant to fill the gap in the availability of a large low-frequency radio astronomy facility to complement the higher-frequency facilities such as the VLA's very large array in New Mexico, United States. Dr. Swaroop cleverly exploited features suitable for low-frequency radio astronomy to make the GMRT a realizable project, both technically and economically. One of the central ideas was the concept of smart, stretched mesh attached to rope trusses SMART. A wire mesh stretched over the rope trusses forms the actual reflecting surface. This allowed the GMRT antennas to have very low solidity and significantly reduced weight, making it affordable to build 30 numbers of 45 meter diameter size dishes. The Government of India approved the GMRT project in 1987. After some effort, a suitable site was soon identified near Pune in India and Dr. Swaroop and his team set about constructing the telescope by 1990. After the first GM antenna was erected, the project gathered pace and the last antenna was erected by 1996. The amazing team behind this gigantic build-up was The work on completing the electronics, especially the digital receiver systems, took longer. But finally, after almost a decade since the launch of the project, all the basic systems were in place by 2000. And GMRT was dedicated to the international astronomical community by the chairman of the Council of the TFR, Sri Ratan Tata, in 2001. Nobel laureate 
astrophysicist Subramanian Chandrasekhar was awestruck to see such a giant facility constructed in India. Urging all to visit the observatory, he quotes, shouldn't have thought that such things can be done. The GMRT, an international class facility built on a shoestring budget, became a jewel in the international astronomical landscape from day one. By 2007-2008 or so, when it was clear that the GMRT was working quite well, the group at NCRA started to think about the next step towards the future. After some deliberations, it was agreed to go for an upgrade of the GMRT, where the main improvement would be to provide near seamless frequency coverage from as low as 50 MHz to 1500 MHz and also to improve the instantaneous bandwidth of observations to 400 MHz from the 32 MHz that the original GMRT design provided for. This required a complete overhaul of the entire receiver chain of the existing GMRT. After the initial prototype developments, the upgrade project started in full steam by around 2012 and now today, in early 2019, it is complete and ready for full release. With that, a fresh wave of exciting new results is expected to sweep through the global astronomical community. By the time GMRT project began to take shape, the radio astronomy group under the leadership of Dr. Swarup had become large enough that it was justified to have it set up as a separate center of the TIFR. In January 1994, the TIFR Council approved the setting up of the National Center for Radio Astrophysics in CRA with headquarters located in Pune and the two main instrumental facilities at Uti and Khodar. Today, as NCRA completes 25 years of existence, it has become a strong, rich and a mature research group both in radio astronomy techniques and the astrophysics that results from the use of these techniques and has carved out its own special niche on the global stage. Over the years, NCRA has been led by eminent scientists who have strived to carry on the legacy that Dr. Swaroop created. Dr. V.K. Kapahi, Dr. P.C. Agrawal, Dr. R. Nityanand and Dr. S.K. Ghosh and currently being headed by Dr. Yashwin Gupta.